Hi, I'm James. Let's talk about finishing Emacs in the posterior arena. This will be a series of several videos on various finishing styles for Emacs. We're gonna go through the finishing once it comes out of the milling unit. So in my clinical theater, I fit it in the mouth first, make sure the margins are on, the interproximal contacts are on, but I don't adjust the occlusion yet until we crystallize. Why do I check it? Well, I wanna make sure my interproximal contacts are spot on. That's where I use parameters. If you go through the prep video in this series, it talks about preparing the teeth next door so you get ideal inner proximal footprints. Now, when those are ideal, we can use our color metrics, which in my clinical theater for Emacs is negative two five, that's solid aqua. That should drop right down with just a little bit of firmness, right? Because once we crystallize the Emax, it's gonna shrink just a little bit. The other thing that you'll notice in this series of videos is the occlusal morphology. I'm a really big occlusal morphology person. It goes way back to my years with GOAT, particularly in dental school where we learned morphology. Morphology is about function. It needs to fit the mouth you're working in. Now in the Cerex software, your morphology will be great as long as you have enough occlusal reduction. Now the case we're finishing for this video actually has quite a bit of occlusal reduction. So you can see that beautiful morphology. You can't get that all the time if you don't have enough reduction and maybe it won't fit the mouth because if your cusps are too steep, you're gonna get collision in your occlusion. So that's for another video and discussion that you'll find on this site. The post shaping of Emax is done after we tried it in the mouth, make sure we have that security that it's gonna fit. I go through a very defined sequence of steps in post shaping. I like morphology, so I'm gonna shape the occlusal surface once we cut off that sprue. It's a craft for me. I just love looking at my restorations once they've been in the mouth for a while and just getting a rush knowing that I've done my best. So this is the steps that I use. So once we shape that occlusion and get that beautiful morphology, which just really thrills me, we're gonna finish the margins. And then finally, we'll do our surface finishing based on how you're gonna finish the Emacs. Now in this series, we're gonna go through polish. We're gonna go through brush on, stain and glaze. We're gonna go through spray, stain and glaze. So with the final finish that you're gonna create, you wanna have in mind how you're gonna finish it. Now in most of my cases, I'm gonna use crystal glaze or another type of glaze, and I'm gonna brush on the glaze. And then we surface mix in colors, so when that fires, it's all done with one step. Another proficient way to finish your Emacs would be to place your colors on first, which would be your crystal stains or another stain system, and then use a spray glaze. That's actually very, very, very fast. And I like that approach too. So there will be a video on that, or you can just go ahead and polish, no stain and glaze. I find that posteriorly, I'm a little faster if I add glaze, because if we polish and we like morphology and we're shaping in morphology, then we're gonna need to really work to get that final finish down in those grooves. And that will actually take longer because if you leave any micro scratches on the surface, that's a point of propagation for failure. So one thing about the glaze is that it will seal any of those little micro marks <laughs> and scratches that come from either the mill or the post finishing process. So my goal is to create something very efficient that looks really great in a very short period of time. And I usually find stain and glaze works best for that. So let's go ahead and get started with what we do. Once that comes out of the milling unit, we're gonna fit it in the mouth, make sure it fits the way we want it. And then we're gonna take it to our lab bench or your chair side bench. And then we're gonna go through a very refined step of finishing. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. Now, before we start the shaving process, we want to have a really good handpiece. Now, if you're working chair side, it's great to have electric handpiece coming off of that unit because you need the torque. I prefer to use a lab handpiece that has a really good torque to it. And then you want really good, excellent instruments to work with. We're gonna be using the JK03 kit by Meisinger. This kit is placed together just for ceramics. I love it because it's so streamlined. 
The pink shapers are for robust shaping. They don't damage the ceramic. You can use them proficiently. The diamonds are for refined shaping and texturing. Then we have the diamond wheels. That's for cutting off sprues and creating unique incisal shapes on your ceramics. And then you have the polishers. We have the wheels and then we have the twists. Now, when you're glazing, just keep it just to the green. So green is pre-glaze. Why is it just that color? Well, if you go more refined in your polish before you glaze, that's when the glaze can start beating up on you and get that orange peel effect, unless you want it. But in most cases, we want that surface not to be too smooth. So that way, when you place that glaze on it and the colors in the glaze, it kind of infiltrates and infuses into that outer layer of your ceramic and you don't want to over polish that and it will create a really predictable finish. So once you're done with your glaze, we can use some polishing techniques to control the superficial gloss finishing. So all the ceramic videos on this site will be using the JK03 Meisinger kit. And then I have another kit for just zirconia green finishing and then post centering finishing and that's a great kit as well. So let's go ahead and get started with the shaping process. I love this wheel, this diamond shaper. It's designed to rapidly remove ceramic and it's ideal for sprue removal and smoothing. A light touch with the RPM around 10 to 15 K works effectively. Turn that wheel on edge. It's a nice carver to refine the external primary grooves. With a really light touch, it works effectively. It will not damage the ceramic or overheat it. Once we have the external grooves refined, our goal here is to use a shaping instrument to completion. The next shaping instrument, one of my favorites, is the centered inverted cone. It's on the JK03 lab kit. It's multiple layers of diamonds, which allows it to be used for a long period of time. It's very useful. What we're going to do here is refine shaping. I do this for me. Out of the milling unit, we have a pretty nice definition of anatomy. What we're doing here is using that diamond inverted cone just to refine the depths and the style of the grooves. I do this for me because this is where I get my rush. This video will demonstrate various techniques just to help us learn the process. You can take it wherever you want to take it. Notice that as we're shaping, that we keep the handpiece in one location and we turn the restoration to change the angle and the position of the burr. That is a effective way for shaping. My goal here is to shape to the depths of the primary grooves and a subtle shaping of the secondary groove definition. On a restoration like this, you can see we have well-shaped triangular ridges. The only way we can achieve that is to have proper reduction for the minimal thickness criteria of your material. The morphology that we can achieve is defined by how much occlusal reduction we have. I'm always paying attention to that clinically. So in a case like this, the cone burr on the right side of the milling unit doesn't mill down to what you actually see on your screen. The angle of that cone burr is around 33 degrees. All we're doing is adding back the true definition that was created in the virtual design. The 850 Diamond is my workhorse, both posterior and anteriorly. Here we're using it to create subtle refinements of the grooves and some pericomata if needed. That's just a bounce of that burr across that ceramic surface with a really light touch. It's a good smoothing burr for contouring. The next step in our process is to refine the margins. And this is when we remove that margin thickness parameter to keep the ceramic from chipping during the mill. With the current software versions and the milling units, the marginal thickness parameter usually runs somewhere around 50 to 100 based on what you're trying to accomplish. 
All we're doing here is refining that margin so when you feel that with an Explorer, it's seamless. And our final step is to create pre-glazed luster. This is done with the green luster twist on the JK03 lab kit. With a light pressure, just as if you were shaving, you polish away from the margin, you'll create a nice luster effect and still hold the glaze, whether it be spray glaze or brush on glaze. This will take the convexed areas, smooth them, make them look more natural. You'll leave the con caved areas with a little more texture with one coat of glaze we can effectively complete the ceramic surfaces and it's going to look very nice and professional always maintain a light touch with that twist angle the twist to polish out from the angle of the grooves will allow you to effectively polish down into that groove area and have a incredible result and as you can see here's a nicely shaped sculptured morphology and now we're ready to add some glaze <laughs> and there you have it I love the craft of just shaping in restorations it's a skill set it's a craft you have to make it work for you once you build your skill set you can apply it anywhere in dentistry and that's just something that you have inside yourself that you give back to your patients so the videos that will follow will be the various techniques that we use for staining glaze, whether it be brush on or spray glaze. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you post them below. I love to hear your response and I will respond back to you. I'll talk to you folks later. Bye.